What's good everyone? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a really cool bottle opener with a recycled ski and some dimensional lumber. Let's get started. Okay, so like I said, we're making a really cool wall-mounted bottle opener that you can put anywhere you want, your kitchen, your man cave, wherever, to make opening your next beer a lot more fun, all right? This particular ski was a Christmas gift from my good friend, Scott McNichol. I apologize, man, I'm just now getting to this project, but at least it's better late than never, right? So this ski actually came from a company called Ski Chair, and Ski Chair makes cool furniture out of recycled sports equipment, more specifically skis, snowboards, hockey sticks, and golf clubs. I'll leave their description in the comments below so you guys can check them out as well, but they make really, really cool stuff. This is an old Rossi 4S race ski, it takes me back to my little guy days. Um, and it's actually been a really cool look once it's all finished. It's a cool idea because they pre-drill the holes for you, so there's even less work involved there. They cut it, and get this sucker all prepared for you so you can literally just hang it on the wall if you wanted to. But I'm gonna make it a little bit more defining by adding some, like I said, some dimensional lumber. You can get that from Home Depot or Lowe's. And we're gonna prepare that wood. I'll show you how to do that to make it really cool and detailed. Stain it, and then we're gonna stick the sucker on the wall. They even provide you with the bottle opener itself and wood screws. It's super easy to mount. And I'm excited to put, finally put this together and stick it up in the kitchen so I can start cracking some beers with you, Scott. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scrap two by eight that I had in my shop and I'm gonna run it through my planer. Now, you don't need to run it through a planer. Um, this is just helps me prepare the wood better and less sanding later. You can certainly just use a sander, a random overall sander will be just fine. Start with 80 grit, work your way to 120, then 220 to finish it off. It doesn't take you too long. Make sure you wear a dust mask of some sort because this stuff can get a little messy. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the planer. I'm gonna take a 16th of an inch off each end of this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and square the ends up, and then I'm gonna actually add a detail. So I'm gonna route an edge of this, just to kind of clean it up and make it a little extra special. We're gonna run that through the router. I'll show you how to do that. And then quick sand, and then we're gonna go ahead and stain it nice and dark to kind of pop out that ski, and you're ready to go. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my depth on my planer. Okay, so when you're using a planer, what you wanna do is you wanna take your wood that you're gonna plane down, you wanna slide it into right under where there's, there's a bubble here that'll actually touch the wood. You wanna hold this down nice and flat. This is unlocked so I can use the wheel to bring the metal down. And I'm gonna keep turning that wheel until I hit the depth that I wanna take off the wood. In this case, I said I'm gonna take a 16th off each off the total, so that's a 30 second off each end. Once I'm there, I lock it down, I'm ready to go. Pull that back out, and then I'm gonna get my safety equipment, eye protection, ear protection, turn it on, and we're ready to go. <laughs> Okay, now that I've got my lumber planed the way I want it to the right thickness and it looks pretty good on both ends, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through my router table with the bit that I've chosen, which is a beading bit with a quarter inch shank on it, and I've got it set to the right height of where I want this detail to be for depth and for actual thickness along this edge, similar to a round over bit, which it kinda already has anyway with lumber, but I'm actually gonna create that kind of detailed route look um, with this beading bit and there's all kinds of different beading bits you can get out there if you go to your hardware store or you go to your big box company a lot of those bits that you buy will show you the actual detail it's going to be created with this bit and you just kind of decide what you want it to look like and you go from there 
different depths will create a different look with the same bit as well. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I like to do is go ahead and set it to where I want. I actually will take um, either a tape measure or even more simply as a combo square I can set here to get the depth that I want measured to where I want it on this edge. Um, I've made some other videos that kind of explain the router table and the, and the routing mechanisms itself, especially with those tools. If you don't have a router, you don't have a routing table, you don't want to do, deal with this, that's okay, it's totally fine. You could literally take the same sander you've been using for this top and just take it along the edge and just round it over simply itself. But that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this detail here. So I've got my detail set up the way I want, I measured it, then I always run a scrap piece through to see how it looks, compare it to where I'm visualizing it in my head, and then I'm ready to go. So I'm going to run all four edges through this on the face the face that's going to be showing to us, and then we are ready for some sanding and some staining. So let's get this done. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and sand this piece down, get it nice and smooth, open up the pores of the wood so it's ready for whatever stain I'm going to pick. I, like I said, I think it's going to be a dark stain. As I get closer to that, I always tend to change my mind, so we'll see. But because I planed this thing down and took a, a total of a 16th off, so a 30 second per side, it's pretty, pretty opened up already. But I'm gonna go ahead and take my 220 grit with my random orbital sander, and I'm gonna go ahead and clear both faces and the edges. I'm gonna be careful not to go ahead and round over the, the routed edge I've already done. I may take a little bit of hand sandpaper to that, depending on how it looks. And then it's ready for stain and we're off and running. So let's get started with the sanding. Okay, once I finish sanding the whole face on both sides and the edges, I like to come back with either a scrap piece of my random orbital sandpaper or the piece I just used uh, on, the, on the surface itself. And what I do is I just kind of hand sand and get all the burrs out of all my edges that I've routed on this piece of wood. You don't want to take the random orbital sander or any sander that's mechanical for that purpose and go ahead and try and sand the edges because what you're going to end up doing is round right over the detail you just put into the wood. And that defeats purpose. So I just go ahead and I run. I bend it over, I run some pieces right through here, gently, same thing, whatever grit I used on the face and on the rest of the, the surface itself, I'm gonna use that same grit here. Just apply a light pressure and just take it on through big long strokes, get all the burrs out. It's just gonna prepare it for stain, which is next. All right, I have decided to go with a black cherry stain I think partly because I'm thirsty right now and black cherry reminds me of like black cherry soda, which sounds amazing right now. Anyway, I think it'll work out real well with the color of the ski that I'm going to mount to this and just because it's here and I think it's uh, something I can use. So we're going to give it a shot, see what it looks like. Um, again, you want to make sure with stain that you just, when you open the can, you give it a very light stir, just kind of get everything moving, especially if it's a can that you already used and make sure that it's not completely separated. Um, Stains are important. I like to use the Varathane brand a lot. That's one that I go with big time. And um, the other thing you want to make sure you do, wear gloves so you don't make a mess. All right, first coat going on. All right, next step, polyurethane. I'm going to go with a semi-gloss clear and I'm probably going to put two coats of it on here because again we're opening bottles on this and I have friends and family that are pretty darn messy. I can see a lot of liquid getting spilled on this even with it mounted on a wall and gravity help dissipating the spill factor. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this on just like I would normally do with a stain. Um, Again, two coats. Once that sets up and dries, then I'll show you how to mount this bad boy on here and install it on the wall of your favorite spot to open bottles. And this sucker's done. 
Final step is going to be mounting the ski. Polyurethane is done, everything is sealed up, ready to go. As you can see, we've got a nice shiny piece of board to mount our ski bottle opener to. So here's what I'm going to do next. I have to find my width of this face edge across the board so I can find my middle so I can mount the ski nice and centered on the, on the wood itself to make it nice and uniform. Simplest way to do that is simply to, simply, simply, measure from face to face of your final detail, okay? So in this case, I'm at eight and five eighths is the width of the face of the board I'm gonna mount it to, all right? Half of eight and five eighths is four and five sixteenths. Four and five sixteenths is gonna be my absolute center of this board, okay? So, I've already done this, but I set my combo square to four and five sixteenths, so I can set this on edge, right like that, okay? And the edge of my combo square is going to be the exact center of my board. So I'm gonna set that on there. I'm gonna draw a line straight down the middle, so then I can line up my holes that are already pre-drilled on the ski, okay? And I'm actually gonna set those right on the middle line, center the hole, and then I'm gonna take my screws and the bottle opener that it came with, and I'm gonna set those on there. I'm going to mark my holes on the board, and then I'm gonna pre-drill everything on here for the holes, and then I'm gonna set it on there and screw it down. These screws are actually gonna be used not only to mount the ski, but actually to mount the board to the wall. It's just gonna be one single screw going through each one of these holes all the way into my framing of wherever I'm going to mount it on the wall. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but I'm literally going to actually hang these straight through the board onto the wall. <laughs> Okay, I've picked my spot in the room where I'm gonna hang it. It's directly across from the drink fridge itself, which is perfect. I've got a spot on the wall where there's no pictures or other decorations, and it's actually gonna fill a void on this section of wall in this room, so that's also perfect. Now, next step is to actually mount it to structure. We can't just screw some, some stuff into the wall here unless we're using drywall anchors, and because I only have three screws running down the middle of that, I'm going to hit framing. It's always more important to hit framing. I've said that in lots of my videos. So I've got my stud finder and a pencil, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a, the, the first stud that I can hit from this corner this way, and that's gonna be the spot I'm gonna hang it on the wall. I don't want it too far out into the room, but I certainly am not gonna hang it nice and tight to the corner of the room, or the corner of the wall, because that's not gonna work well for opening bottles. So the way these things works, and I've showed you before, you stick it on the wall, and you hold down the button. Let off the button, now I'm gonna get into my deep scan. I know that I've got framing here in the corner, so I'm gonna to move to my left slowly until I find my first stud. I'm trying to stay at a height where I can mark it where that board is actually gonna be. So I should be getting close here, and saying I'm close, boom, there's my stud. I'm gonna mark it right there, okay? There's my mark on the wall. Now I know where that framing is. That's where my screws are gonna go directly through. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab the board and we're gonna put the first screw into the structure. Okay, once my first screw is in, I'm gonna turn that until I'm level and then I'm gonna screw the second one in. From the bottom is the best.
the level looks good. I'm gonna install the last one and we are good to go. All right, there you have it. Custom recycled ski bottle opener. Super cool project, not hard at all. Skichair.com is the place to get all this stuff. Go check them out. Link is in the description below. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button on the way out. I'd really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Check out BuiltByBaileys.com for all the merchandise. If you wanna pick something up, hoodies, tees, beanies, the whole nine yards. Also, don't forget we got podcasts on this YouTube channel and on all of the audio platforms you can find us, Built by Bailey's Podcast. We got great guests that come on all the time. Again, appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, keep building.